Hello once again, Martin Popoff here. Welcome back to another episode of The Contrarians. This is going to be another solo show of our Contrarians Presents uh, situation. So this is where we can go kind of freewheeling and do some different things. This is a bit of a follow-up to uh, to a show I did, uh, Building the Ultimate UK Glam or Glitter Rock album from the Alice Cooper catalog. Uh, this is a very similar one because this is the other sort of burning concept that came from this whole thing. I've got BOC on the brain uh, right now because we're building a uh, a panel book uh, going through all the studio albums. And of course, I do have back in at martinpopoff.com. I've got my uh, Flaming Telepaths Imaginos expanded and specified book. Um, back in print again after being out for a year, and I still have Agents of Fortune and the uh, and the visual biography as well. Um, but yeah, so here's the idea. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, the Contrarians presents. I built the ultimate black and white period Blue Oyster Cult album from the Alice Cooper catalog! Exclamation uh, mark. Let's call this album Tarantulas and Mutation. How's that? Um, so the idea here is that. Um, I always found it really interesting that that black and white period of Blue Oyster Cult sounds like no other band on earth except one. And that's the original Alice Cooper group, pretty much relentlessly through all the albums and, you know, very, very deliberately uh, on on a lot of these records. Um, and, you know, it, there, there's there's a bit of a, a synergy there in that uh, Blue Oyster Cult early on went on tour supporting Alice Cooper and were blown away by Alice Cooper. Loved the whole concept. And remember, Columbia wanted uh, their own version of a Black Sabbath. Um, Alice Cooper, uh, well, interestingly enough, so, so Black Sabbath and Alice Cooper would end up on the same label. Um, Alice Cooper, okay, so put it this way. Uh, Blue Oyster Cult was never... America's Black Sabbath. They were never that heavy. Um, but Alice Cooper uh, are almost like the slightly mellower version of the one step there, which is coming from this psych situation where uh, you've got a Dorsey lighter version of heavy metal, right? So Alice Cooper is that. Basically, Alice Cooper is that, and Blue Oyster Cult is that, and nobody else on earth is that. I mean, you could say Steppenwolf might be a little bit that way. Uh, but both Blue Oyster Cult uh, and Alice Cooper came from that sort of psych garage era as they were coming up, and they evolved into what they evolved into. Now, basically, my my thesis here is that um, you could take a bunch of these uh, Alice Cooper group um, songs, and man, I can just picture I can just picture Albert drumming them. I can picture Alan Lanier doing the organ stuff on them. I can picture the different lead vocalists. Where would Buck fit in? A ver you know, when Alice is crooning, that would be Buck. And when Alice is, you know, exerting a little air, pushing a little air, it'd be Eric. And then in between, it could be Joe. It could be Albert. Um, so And the arrangements are there, that like both bands uh, through the whole Murray Krugman, Sandy Perlman situation. They got kind of a boxy, mid-rangey, not that great sound. I don't think the Alice Cooper group ever got a particularly great sound with Bob Ezra neither. So let's get into it. Let's let's look at what songs could comprise, what, what 10 songs, five per side on an old piece of vinyl, could make a perfect, perfect... Uh, uh, an analog to tyranny mutation or an analog to bluish to cult or an analog to secret treaties. Um, so let's kick off strong with billion dollar babies. Great song. It's very rhythmic the way Blue Oyster Cult did like cities on flame with rock and roll. It sounds like a, a well-written Blue Oyster Cult song, but it's these guys. I want to make a, one other point. I mean, remember that later on in life, blue coop comprises a, uh, uh, Albert Bouchard, Joe Bouchard, and Dennis Dunaway. So they're friends with those guys. They're friends with Neil Smith. Um, they know these guys. There's a couple of co-writes along the way. There's the Dead Ringer band that Joe does. Um, but basically, uh, yeah, a lot, lot of crossover between these bands. So Billion Dollar Babies kicks us off uh, in fine fashion with just a good anthemic rocker that I totally can imagine being on one of those black and white period albums. Then we go into Unfinished Suite from Billion Dollar Babies also good up tempo a little proggy i can picture this being like a richard Meltzer lyric about a trip to the dentist sort of thing and he writes some you know psychedelic thing maybe he's going under or whatever um but yeah can can picture that one so another punchy one then we go into desperado now desperado i could see that sung by buck but with eric on the on the heavier parts it's got a mellow melodic verse and then eric may be singing the chorus but it's definitely got that same sort of murky dark dorsey melody uh that again 
that's the band that both these bands absolutely share. And then they're hard rocking it and progging it up a little bit. And nobody else is sounding like this. Uh, then we go into Looney Tune from Schools Out. Swingy, jazzy drums. I can picture this being Albert Bouchard drumming. You know, Albert and, and Neil Smith uh, definitely had the same sort of drumming style. Absolutely. One's just a little guy and one's a big tall guy. But other than that, um, uh, they they really have a similar style. Um, but yeah, another very dark doorsy one. Then we close with Halo of Flies. Uh, again, I can picture this being a Richard Meltzer lyric. Very proggy. It's from, it's from you know, the early one. I made of my notes here. Debut. This really sounds like debut era uh, Blue Oyster Cult. That's the big thing here. I can see Albert singing this. Maybe Albert with a little bit of Eric. So that's how we close off our, our side one. Kind of ponderous, spooky, proggy sort of thing. Side two kicks off with Muscle of Love. Uh, so this is the very last Alice Cooper group album. But, you know, I mean, they're making these all in a compressed time frame. So I didn't pick anything from Pretties for You or or Easy Action, but I'm totally sh- I could have uh, because, you know, that first Blue Oyster Cult album is pretty loopy that way as well, even though it's 72. It's, it's long removed from those two albums. Um, but, yeah, let's kick off with a good muscular, again, rhythmic one. It totally sounds like Albert's drumming again. Then let's go into I'm 18. So second track, um, you know, it's it's a hit. It sounds like a hit, but it really, really sounds like a Blue Oyster Cult melody. It's dark. It's kind of a dirgy ballad. It's a it's about as mellow as Blue Oyster Cult would ever get. That's the other thing with the this. I didn't when I did the glam episode. Um, I I picked some things that are kind of sparse and T Rexy, and I also picked some things that were really cheerful. None of that goes on to this thing. This is all about the dark, doorsy, progressive, and heaviness um, of of those Alice Cooper groups. So so that's the sort of the theme here. But yeah, this this has got. Uh, I'm 18 has shades of astronomy to it. It's got shades of uh, then came the last days of May to it. Uh, then we go on to long way to go up tempo boogie rocker, a little bit of ME 262 to this. I can picture Buck throwing in those licks all over the place the way he does, you know, the, the moving back and forth between rhythm guitar and lead guitar. Uh, cool bass line from Dennis Dunaway here. I can picture Joe Bouchard doing this. Um, and then we go into Big Apple Dreaming from Muscle of Love. Um, it's about New York. It's a strong melody. It's got this great melodic chorus that has those dependable Louie Louie chords to it kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it, it gives us that new york connection here Uh, and then we close off with hallowed be my name which again we're going back to halo of flies for something uh very proggy and doorsy it's got a full band arrangement that's the other thing everything i picked here um and and you notice across the blue oyster cult black and white period albums they're they all are full band arrangements everybody's there everything's basically electric there's nothing super super quiet really anywhere but there's nothing super heavy either everybody is just making a clamorous 60s sort of dark psych noise and that's and that's the types of songs i picked from this alice cooper band a uh, catalog so there you go let me know uh in the comments below uh what you think of uh tarantulas and mutation uh whether or not i mean Basically, the point I wanted to make is there are only two bands on the planet that sound like this, and that's Blue Oyster Cult in the black and white period and Alice Cooper in the original Alice Cooper group period. Nobody else made music like this. Um, and that's kind of uh, the point I wanted to make with this. But, man, you know, I I would love, I would love to see Blue Oyster Cult cover all these songs, right? Um, that would be really cool uh, to, to hear those voices while Eric can still sing, while Buck can still sing, maybe get a little Richie Castellano in there. Uh, but, yeah, wouldn't that be cool if the next Blue Oyster Cult album was this weird album w- that was a cover of a bunch of Alice Cooper songs, and they made this black and white period Alice Cooper album? How cool would that be? Um, there you go. Um, you can join our Patreon situation if you want to be part of our panels where we do those big, long Dark Horse series albums or or other stuff. Those are always a lot of fun. We've got merch as well. But other than that, hit like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, go go make a Spotify playlist of this and, uh, and let me know. Uh, because I, I, I listen to this and other than with Alice Cooper singing on there, other than knowing that's Alice Cooper, the whole rest of the thing sounds basically like Blue Oyster Cult, Blue Oyster Cult, that first album. Anyways, there you go. Talk to you soon.